So, Stefan, I saw your documentary, Project Cold Days, in the winter of 2018. And since then, it's screened all over Ottawa, and it's also broadcasted nationally. What has that experience been like for you, living the life of an artist or of a creative? Well, I'm just beginning to accept that I am an artist and a creative, that this is really my true calling in life and my true purpose. Up until that point, I had really resisted that title, um, but things have come to fruition that have led me to be in this place. And I'd like to say it is an amazing accomplishment and I've been really happy as a result, but it's actually been very painful, very challenging. And finishing the film was just the first step in this journey. And there's a lot more that happens after finishing a film than I knew. When you say painful, what do you mean by that? You know, for me, if, if anyone's seen the film, they know Project Cold is, is really about suffering. It's about surviving depression and the darkness that we face in our lives. And for me, that was a time that I was going through. The reason I went out onto the street to create the film was because I felt empathically what the other people on the street who were living there felt, and I wanted to connect with them. I wanted to understand their stories. And I thought that all of my problems would go away once I finished the film. Of course, it doesn't work that way. Our accomplishments do not define our state of happiness or our state of wellness. It certainly gave me a lot of purpose, and I was very proud of what I accomplished. However, it didn't change the core of who I was, which I had been hoping it would for some reason. Why were you hoping that? Because I was angry at the world. You know, I didn't make Project Cold Days out of a state of happiness and joy and love and peace. I made it through anxiety, through depression, through suffering, through frustration and anger. And I think that's why I connected with people on the streets is because they're angry at the world. They feel like they didn't get a fair shot. And I had always thought that all of my issues were circumstances, were people, were events, places, things. I was a master at blaming everyone around me but me for my problems. And when I finished the film and they were still around and all of these wonderful people came into my life, I suffered a pretty severe heartbreak and I realized I have to change something deep within me. I cannot change my circumstances. I cannot change my setting. I cannot change my place. I have to change deeply from within. And that led to a pathway that has led me to the, the new project that I'm working on. I read somewhere that you said Project Cold Days is more than just a documentary. It's a movement. Can you unpack that for me? What do you mean by that? A good friend of mine, Adam, saw the film and he said, you know, Stefan, there, there's a lot more to this than just a film. And I thought, once the film is done, I want nothing to do with it. I want, I want to move on with my life. This was such a painful experience for me. There was, you know, I put my life savings on the line. I risked everything. I want to do something new. And I realized I couldn't necessarily run away from that shadow. And you know, Project Cold Days is a euphemism for mental illness. It's a euphemism for depression. It's, it's, it's a dark, cold, heavy place where the world is bearing down on you. And in addition to all of those things that I realized about Project Cold Days, I realized that there is a lot of people suffering out there. In all of the screenings I've done and all the places I've shown the film, people will come up to me afterwards and, and tell me their story because they feel it's safe. I've shared my story with them. They feel it's safe for me to share their story. And so many people are lost and alone and suffering and suicide rates are skyrocketing. And we're living in this world where people feel the need to end their lives. And I realize that I have to do something about it, that this is my true calling, that I need to inspire and help and allow people to grow and have awakenings as I have gone through many times in my life. So Project Cold Days is expanding beyond just a simple film. I give talks now at events. Um, 
There's a 10-part series coming out. There's little mini episodes. There's all sorts of things that are going to expand. So Project Cold Days, while initially was a feature film, it's now going to be many other things uh, that many people will be involved in, and it will expand beyond the issues of homelessness. One of the things I find really interesting about this conversation that we're having is that you seem to have fallen in line with a lot of documentary filmmakers that I've spoken to over the years, which is they don't necessarily leave the film behind. They get more involved in the topic, in the movement. And what I find really fascinating is I'm actually getting a chance to talk to someone who's going through that process right away. Because usually by the time I get a chance to talk to them, they've already committed. They're very clear about what their goal is. And many times I think they almost knew that when they got into making the film. But as a new filmmaker, this was all very new to you. Was it a surprise to you that you weren't able to let go of the film and of the subject matter easily? I think I have let go of the film and the subject matter. But the subject matter has expanded in terms of me being a filmmaker, that's a bit of a paradigm because this film wasn't made by a filmmaker. This film was made by someone who was suffering and was called to by the universe to create a film. It just happened to be the medium I used. I didn't decide this. It was chosen for me. And I went out with a camera with no knowledge and no experience and filmed what I saw. I had no intent of being a filmmaker. I still struggle to call myself a filmmaker. If I were to call myself anything, it would be an empath, someone who can feel the energy of those around them. And that energy has expanded. I have left the feature film project Cold Days behind, but now I'm doing new things. I'm going to corporate events where I get asked to speak stories and inspire people who are suffering sitting behind desks all day. Uh, I take photographs of people now. I take really powerful photos and I've recently been involved with a yoga studio who I'm helping change their dynamic and the perception of even what their teachers think they are. I want to ask you, Stefan, where did this project take you professionally and personally. I know you've sort of alluded to that, but let's talk a little bit more about professionally. How has this changed you? Are you still doing a nine to five? No. And I hope I never have to again, because I love the freedom of being a filmmaker. I wake up every day and I decide what I'm going to explore. And my palette is the universe, right? There is no limit on the creativity that one can have through the medium of film and photography. It is a huge challenge because I have to motivate myself to get out. I'm, I'm really an entrepreneur now, so I don't have the stability of a nine to five job. I don't have benefits. Uh, I struggle to get by. I once was fairly well off, uh, you know, a very high salary job and now I struggle to buy groceries and it's difficult. It's difficult to be in a place where sometimes I can't afford to buy groceries. And that's the truth of it, that I went from a six figure job to this and people say, well, you should go back and, and, you know, go back to your engineering work. And I, I will never do that. I've burned that bridge. It's beyond the thought of going back now. There's only one way I can move and that's forward. And if that means that I have to suffer, if that means that I have to lose everything, nothing is going to stop me from becoming su at least financially successful enough to, to pay the bills. That I've given up a lot and I would continue to give up a lot for this art form. That's how much I love it. What have you learned about yourself in making that decision? Because that's a pretty big decision, right? To go from being very financially stable to basically a precarious environment or precarious employment. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like going from stable ground to having a small tremor that happens every time I wake up. There's instability there. I don't have solid ground. I don't know that every two weeks I'm going to get a paycheck. I don't know that I'm necessarily going to have benefits. 
if something happened medically, I could be in big trouble. You know, I struggle to get by week by week. But that instability births creativity. Stability and being content doesn't birth creativity. It's risking it all that we really get paid back by the universe in ideas and inspiration. Let's talk about your new 10-part miniseries. What's that about? And given that you're going in a new direction in terms of how you're funding this, I'm assuming because the first project, you funded it completely on your own. There's no new direction. I'm still... You're still funding this. I've applied for dozens of grants, awards, all kinds of funding. I have not got one penny and that it's heartbreaking. There's no way around it. It's absolutely heartbreaking to get denied when I believe my film is a stunning piece of work that the industry should get behind, but they haven't. And I have to move forward. So I actually sold almost all of my filming equipment. I sold almost everything. I sold pretty much everything I had to keep going, to, to back end the funding of the film. I'm still hoping to get funding for Project Cold Days. It's, the feature film is still considered incomplete because if I truly want to complete it, I'm going to need some money to do so in terms of the, the post-production. However, I still have a tripod, a lens, and a camera, which is all I really need. And that is what I'm using to create my new series, which is called Transmuting Suffering. So while Project Cold Days was the suffering, transmuting suffering is likened to what an alchemist does, which takes rusty metals, um, things that have seemingly no value, and turns those, those things into something beautiful, something magical. They turns it into gold. And I believe we suffer for a reason. I believe people are, are on the streets for a reason. I believe that there is a pathway to healing that we can take. And for many people, that's inaccessible. So the point of transmuting suffering is to make that transmutation from the pain of a mental health or addiction issue and transmute it into joy, bliss, awakening, into an inspired life, which is something that I've lived through several times. And I probably will continue to do so. And what format will this take? Will you be interviewing people? Is it sort of mini, a bunch of mini documentaries put together into a series? Each episode is around 20 minutes. And I don't want to give too much away for the first episode. But let's just say it follows a similar narrative structure that I've used before. It's very circular in nature. And I also dip into the Project Cold Days archives because to make that film, I shot over 100 hours of footage. And I was like, I have so much footage here. You know, there were some interviews that I did and they were all done on the street, all in the winter, that were two hours long. But I only used maybe 30 seconds of each interview. So I have a lot of footage. However, each episode will have what I call an expert. So the first episode will be about vulnerability, about how to practice vulnerability. Because the first step to healing is being vulnerable with ourselves, is accepting that that we have had some trauma, that there is pain, rather than masking it or saying everything is fine. We have to be honest and vulnerable with ourselves. So there'll be special guests in each episode who are kind of a master of that topic. And I'll also be a part of it as well. So I'm stepping out from behind the camera to being in front of the camera. So it really is in large part a story of of my awakening and my healing. And I'm sharing those lessons with people. And what has that experience been like for you from moving, moving from behind the camera to in front of the camera? I love it in a lot of ways. It's quite difficult because I'm doing it alone. So I have to line up all my shots. You know, I have to set the mic and all that. And if I want to do movement with the camera, it's difficult to do. But I love it because I have these wonderful moments where I'm sitting, you know, maybe by a waterfall or on the top of a mountain. And it's just me and my camera 
and that wonderful moment and the ideas that I want to share. I don't feel any pressure from anyone else. I don't have to deliver anything to anyone. It's, it's done on my own time. One of the challenges is editing. It's difficult to edit, edit footage of myself. Anyone who's edited footage of themselves knows that it's quite difficult sometimes because we have to spend hours and hours and hours looking at all of our imperfections, editing out all the things that aren't perfect. I think one of the things that strikes me about where you are right now is You've had a very rich journey from the first time we met and talked about Project Cold Days, because at that time, it hadn't even screened yet, Mm -hmm. to now where it's screened, you've gone around to schools, again, it's been on television, to where you are now with this new series. In terms of your creative journey, technically, in terms of your technical skills, as well as where you think this will take you eventually, where do you see that? So if you could probably start off with the technical piece first, because last time we talked a lot about the challenges that you had to catch up with the technology and how you learned. So where are you now with that process? The beauty of learning something is that once you've learned it, you don't have to think about it anymore. So now when I have a professional camera, I don't even look at the buttons. I'm sure any professional knows this, but when to get really good at something, if you have to think about what you're going to do next, it's too slow. The moment has passed you by. Just like you don't think about when you're driving a car. You don't think about the brake and the gas and the shifting. It's naturally in- in integrated. The pathways of our brain are already there, so it's immediate. So now there's a lot more confidence there. If there's something that comes up and that is beautiful, and even if all I have is my camera body and a lens, no tripod, no nothing else, I can still capture that shot. And that is one of the nice things about having the technical ability to to create film is that we don't miss the beautiful moments. We can capture them. And I'm now confident that when those moments happen, I'm not going to go home, look at the footage and think, oh, no, it's exposed way off. I used the wrong setting here. It's out of focus. So that certainly has given me more room for creativity, more room for the passion that I have because that is no longer a barrier for me. And in terms of your creative journey, you mentioned that you're doing photography. Can you speak just a little bit more about what that actually looks like? Are you also doing video for other folks? When I realized that the film wasn't going to get funding easily, I thought, okay, I'm going to have to start to diversify. And I've always loved photography. And, you know, there is an innate ability there for sure. And photography, I find, is a little bit more marketable in terms of people needing, you know, professional headshots and and marketing material and stuff like that. Video is a little bit more complicated uh, because shooting a corporate video, for example, you need to have a full team. Excuse me. You need to have a full team for that. In terms of the creative elements that I'm going through, I really use a very simple method of finding creativity and that's for allowing stillness in my life. To me, part of my work is meditation, for example. I meditate twice a day. It is in those moments of stillness that new ideas can arise. It is in those moments where we forget about the past life, what we have in the future, all of the things going on, that new creations are birthed. Because otherwise, we're still chained to our old ideas. So for me, my creative process is to allow opening, to allow space within me for those ideas to be birthed. I don't control them. I don't decide on them. I don't even think about them. If anything, I think less. And it's also a lot to do with the people I meet, the people I pass by, the people who inspire me, where I'm going in this world. And Ottawa has become more beautiful to me than ever. I think Ottawa is a a staggeringly beautiful city and just exploring the city inspires me. So now rather than driving, I try my best to bicycle around or rollerblade or walk or go canoeing or be out in nature to find places that inspire me and find stillness within that. And I think I'd like to, I'd like to end off 
by asking you about advice that you would offer to up and coming filmmakers. Because you've had, again, such an eventful maybe 18 months, or and when I say 18 months, I'm just thinking about from when I saw the film, but of course, it's probably been a couple of years. What advice would you offer to newbies that are picking up their camera or who just have an idea? What have you learned through this short time that you've been involved with this art form, with this media that you could, what kind of advice would you offer them? Mm. I would offer them the advice that they shouldn't try too hard. That if it's going to come to them, it will. It will happen naturally. We don't need to go out and find these things. We don't need to push as hard as we think. In fact, I think some people push themselves too hard to create. Allow the creations to come from within. They're there for everyone, not, not even quote unquote artists. Everyone, in my opinion, is an artist. But so many people believe what society has told them that they're not an artist, that they're not talented, that they're not capable. But every human being on the planet is an artist. Everyone has expression and creativity. These are gifts that every person has. And allow that to rise from within. Have faith and confidence in oneself rather than looking for external things to validate us. We live in a world where we seek external validation. And as a filmmaker, we put our heart and soul on a screen for people to judge. But if that's what the end goal is, to seek validation, then the product isn't going to be genuine. It isn't going to be authentic. And if I can offer some technical advice, this is something I tell all the newbies who ask me, I say, get a camera that you can shoot full manual so you can control the exposure, aperture, uh, ISO, shutter speed. Walk around the city and always have your camera with you and only shoot in manual mode. You will screw up a lot of shots, but eventually when you get home and you see, oh no, I overexposed, I underexposed, this is the best way to learn is trial by fire. So turn off all the auto settings, get a camera that allows you to do full manual, and that will teach you the essence of light and shadow. Because filmmaking and photography is only two things. It's light and shadows. All the other things come together through that. But there are only two things that truly matter, is the light and the dark. And that is what creates an image. Stefan, thank you very much for joining me on Luta Continua. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me back.